greeting to the king. It's a greeting to the king. Yeah, forever. Oh, Tell anybody else who lives forever because clearly you lie. Yeah, I'm saying. Text don't tell us that. It says God shut the lion's mouth. But he didn't tie the hands. Not, he didn't tie their clothes. He didn't tie their feet, the legs up. They weren't nailed to the stone wall to stop the attack. Mm -hmm. He just stopped them from being consuming. Yeah. You, you know what that feels like? To be in a place scared and helpless? hopeless well they're not killing you they're just draining life from you and it's not that they're attacking you to stab you and it leads to you dying it's, it's just they just want to see you sweat you 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 ever been in that kind of a place though mm -hmm. god's been good but there's pressure because they're standing on me mm -hmm. it's not killing me it just really hurts me like you, you, it's not always the lights are off. It's that the pressure from the amount of the bill that keeps coming. Yes. It's the threat of dying. It's the threat of it getting cut off. It's the threat of having lose it. It's the threat of being like put out. It's the threat of it. We're not always talking about always dying. All the, the absolute worst. I'm talking about the lead up to it. That's what he's under that night. Like when does the grace of God run out? When, when, when is it that, like, I'm, I'm not un, under siege, but I'm under the, like, illusion to believe that God's goodness is going to stop being good to me. Where grace and favor is not unknown, but it's unfound to me. I need to understand what it like. goes to the den and says to him, hey, Daniel, has your God still been good to you? Has he saved you, spared you, allowed you to be alive to talk back to me this morning? He has direct connection. With David. Daniel does. And, and so they're both prophets of God, but they're both under attack by friends who they help get in office. And I, I imagine the night Daniel had where sleeping and comprehension of what mercy is comes into play. And the king shows up and says, has God saved you? You know what it's like to answer when somebody who's hurt you one day if you survived the attack that they did to you. The thing, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. like he approached Daniel. He approached him to check on him. Like, hey man, you still doing all right down there? Did God, did God save you? Maybe he knows. Him. Like, this is the true God. But, but the insulting part mm -hmm. is that you put me here. Of course you know I'm down here because you put me here. You, you can't come check on me the morning after because mm -hmm. you put me down here. This is the problem with unequally yoked friendships. Mm -hmm. This is that folk want from you, yeah. uh, but they only call to check up on you to see if you die. Yeah. And on this Thursday, mm -hmm. Daniel wakes up and says, my God is always good to make sure I never die under the attack of what you put me under. Yeah. Some folk just call and check up to make sure you die. Some folk only stop by to assume that your body has been carried away. Yeah. There's some folk that come to the tomb not to exhume you, uh, but they come to resume life as normal, hoping yeah. that yeah. they'll get better because you left something behind, but you didn't die. Mm -hmm. And see, a lot of folk disappointed. They, they, they're not disappointed that God ain't good. They, they're disappointed that God is not good uh, to them, but he's good to you. Some way in reality, you have to be able to reach down inside of you and say that I know grace allows me and that mercy is unaffordable of me yeah. but see the faith of god allows me lets me blesses me and then faith of me that's that's the text to carry on as business as usual without addressing the issue of old business that was never dealt with 
this, this is the problem with today's generation. We want to skirt over and skip over everything that you offended me. You, you, you'll fight up and talk about how the man slept with the girl and be beating up the girl, but never come home to deal with the cheating man. If we dealt with the fact that black people were slaves, then we have to bring up the fact that they were slave to white people. It, this, this is the problem, is that nobody wants to deal with the issue, not the effect of it, but the cause of it. And they show up and they say, do you live? that I am everything that God meant for me to come out of this. I'm alive. Now, I, I live through the worst of what they could put on me. The attack that they threw on me and said I wouldn't survive. What they would downplay you and say that you're not smart enough, that you can't do it. That if everything that followed you before you, it would infect you, it would kill you. That you would be diagnosed to it, become a comatose in it. That this would be the absolute, not death, just defeating you. And Daniel says, you found me, but let me direct you to where I am. I am in the presence of an alive God. And, and so what the enemy will come in trying to kill you, God shows up in the night and fights all night for you. It was a story that one of my substitute teachers told me way back when. She said, while you sleep at night, that there's a war waging between angels and demonic spirits. Is that they're fighting for your sins of yesterday to stop you from waking up to get his grace for today. And then some, somewhere between 12 until 3 o'clock in the morning, that, that, that the demonic spirits were winning because of the way you were yesterday. But somewhere around the break of day, the Bible says between 12 and 3 that the sun refused to shine. Well, I, I, I just believe that the sun maybe stopped shining because somewhere between 12 and 3, when you're in the third realm of sleeping, about to come out or about to die, that Jesus shows up and then fights the battle for you. Because un understand on today that spiritual against spiritual is not anything but just confusion. But we serve a God who's not lewd to confusion, but he's a God of understanding and a God of compassion. And somewhere between 12 and three, I believe that he showed up just in time for that. To say that while you are under attack, that I'll be the one who shuts the lions. Now, I know that they're heavy on you. The attack wants to kill you. I know that it comes to betray you. I know friends don't believe in you and family will not support you, but I've come on today between 12 and three to let somebody know that God shows up for you. He'll show up and prove, prove and show and say that I am still alive. I'm still alive. And so today, if you never thought so, if you didn't believe so, if you were uncomprehendable to the fact of understanding grace was too much for you and mercy was too costly for you, understand that Jesus paid, paid the price for you. And anybody who slayed it by the price of what your life looks like, just tell them, this is who I am. I am grace. You, you, you are looking at grace on today. If you've never seen grace a day in your life, this is what grace looks like. If you've never seen favor, let, let me pull it out out of my pocket and show you what favor looks like. Favor looks like me. I am the grace and the favor of everything that should have died but live. Of everything that should have been consumed but unconsumed. I'm everything that should have never came out but I came up. I'm everything that they said would stay in but God let me free. I'm everything that the enemy said I would not be. God says you're alive to resonate through the testimony. Not about me. But say that there was a God deep down in the lion's den who shed the lion's mouth. This is what he says, dude. Look at everything around me that could have eaten me, mm -hmm. that could have killed me, mm -hmm. could have destroyed me. Everything around me meant to hurt me. Even the friend of me coming to check on me didn't have my best interest in mind. They, they didn't want life for me. They wanted like the end result for me to be me dying that this was the collection of my body. That this was the viewing of what you hope to be my funeral. But I want you to live forever. Live forever. I, I, I want you to live to see God deliver you over and over.